Hi, my name is Toby Campbell. I'm here to teach you how to use Best Case, Worst Case, a communication tool we designed to help you discuss dialysis decisions with your older patients. This story starts with your patient, Miss Gladys Everly. She's an 83-year-old female with stage 5 CKD, heart failure, and a remote history of stroke. She lives alone, but has family nearby. She used to enjoy gardening, but now struggles with mobility. When you saw her three months ago, her EGFR was 16. Today, it's 13. You know Gladys well after seeing her for three years, but this appointment will be different. She's at a crossroads, and you need to discuss her options. Although you've talked about dialysis before, and she doesn't need it right now, it's better to have this discussion today, with you, rather than later, with someone else, or in an urgent setting. You'll want to start by setting the stage. Gladys's kidneys have gotten worse, and this is bad news. Her kidney disease is life-limiting, and her health will surely decline. It's essential Gladys and her family understand that even with dialysis, her life will be very different. How can you make this clear? You might say, I have some bad news. Your kidneys have gotten worse. They are failing, which at some point will lead to your death. We need to start planning for your future, and I want to make sure you understand our options. Next, introduce the graphic aid. For Gladys, you are presenting two options, life with dialysis and life without. For each option, draw a box and a star connected by a vertical line. The star represents a story about the best case. The box represents the worst case. Somewhere along the line lies most likely. Most likely may be close to or the same as the best or worst case, or it could lie somewhere in between. The idea is to combine what you know about the patient's overall health with your understanding of their kidney disease, giving patients and families your best estimate of what's likely to happen. Telling a story is key. This helps patients imagine an unfamiliar experience like dialysis so that they can make decisions based on what's important to them. So, how can you help your patients understand what it is actually like to live with dialysis or how kidney failure will impact their overall health? By translating the statistics you know into stories. Instead of noting a median survival of two years, tell a story about what life might look like when complications of kidney failure occur. You show the probability of these events by where you position the most likely outcome on the line between best and worst. Use the graphic aid to document key elements. This may seem time consuming during a busy clinic, but it is critical. Patients and families will refer to it to discuss these options after meeting with you. Let's get back to Gladys. If she starts dialysis and everything goes well, in the best case scenario, what would life be like? How might she feel after dialysis? How might life change in the short term and over time? Tell the story. In the best case, you'll have dialysis four hours a day, three times a week. After dialysis, you might feel tired, but the next day you'll feel better, probably even better than you feel now. The following day, you'll go back to dialysis. You'll need to watch your diet and how much you drink. If all goes well, your life will be like this for a few years. At some point, however, your health will start to decline. Kidney disease will lead to complications. You'll spend more time getting medical care or in the hospital or at dialysis than doing the things you enjoy. You'll have a complication, like an infection or trouble breathing and we just can't get you through it. Or you'll feel it's all just too difficult and you'll decide to stop dialysis. Eventually, you will die. Let's consider the worst case scenario. For Gladys, the worst case with dialysis is that she just doesn't tolerate it. So she starts dialysis and quickly becomes sick. Maybe dialysis is too much for her hemodynamically and she has a heart attack or becomes critically ill. She gets admitted to the hospital, but as soon as she stabilizes, she goes back to dialysis and has trouble again. She quickly develops complications we can't overcome. 
and the time before she dies is short. Now let's talk about the most likely scenario. To illustrate, put a mark somewhere along the line to indicate its relation to the best and worst case. For Gladys, it's probably somewhere in the middle. It's important to acknowledge her baseline health and note that dialysis will not correct her underlying heart failure or declining mobility. Keeping this in mind, you could say something like, most likely, dialysis will go well at first, but I suspect you'll feel exhausted after each session. Although you'll have good days in between, it will be difficult to do anything other than dialysis and rest on those days. You'll probably suffer setbacks that require time in the hospital, which will make your mobility worse. You'll need a lot of nursing care or maybe need to move to a nursing home. At some point, managing the balance between your heart failure and your kidney failure will become too difficult and shorten your life, maybe on the order of months to a year. As nephrologists, we know Gladys's age and comorbidities predict a median survival of 12 to 24 months with dialysis. Best case, worst case helps you translate your knowledge of this important statistic. Telling stories about the range of possible outcomes allows patients and families to visualize what might happen in a way that numbers alone cannot. Now, repeat these same steps, describing the best, worst, and most likely stories for life without dialysis. In the best case scenario, we continue to follow you, using medicines to keep your breathing, swelling, and labs under control. At some point, things will get worse. I can't be sure when, but not right away. If we're lucky, you have time to continue doing the things you enjoy, maybe even a year. Ultimately, you will develop real trouble from your heart failure and kidney failure. We'll have to work hard to control your symptoms but eventually the medicines won't work anymore and you will die from kidney failure. And so on for the worst and most likely scenarios. Next, listen to what your patient says about the stories you described. You might say, I've said a lot. Tell me how you're thinking about this. Most patients come to clinic already decided about what option to pursue. If Gladys says she just doesn't want dialysis, you don't have enough data. You might reply, it's great that you've already thought about this. Tell me, what are you hoping for if we decide not to pursue dialysis? Access to this thought process is essential. When you know what's important to your patients, you can be sure your recommendation truly aligns with your patient's values and goals. Once you have elicited preferences, the final step is to make a recommendation. It's not okay to simply present options and expect patients to choose. Your job is to match your knowledge about disease and treatment with their knowledge about what's valuable to them. Hopefully, after a conversation like the one I just demonstrated, Gladys is able to tell you what she thinks about the scenarios you described. Perhaps she fears being hooked up to a machine or losing her independence. Maybe you learn her quality of life is poor and she's not interested in prolonging it. Using this information, you could say, I understand your independence is really important to you, and you have strong feelings about dialysis. I'm worried that even in the best case scenario with dialysis, your life would change in a way that's not okay with you, and most likely, you'll end up spending more time in the hospital. Because of this, I recommend against dialysis Let's summarize. Best case, worst case has the following components. First, break bad news. Then, identify a choice between life with and without dialysis. Create a graphic aid that illustrates the range of plausible stories and share it with your patient. You haven't done best case, worst case unless you complete this step. Use storytelling to describe the best, worst, and most likely scenarios. Avoid percentages and statistics. Include the patient's other medical problems in your story about how their life will change with or without dialysis. Include survival and quality of life. Elicit preferences. Ask your patient, what are you hoping for? Once you have learned what is important to your patient, make a recommendation. 
Finally, regardless of the patient's decision, this is a good time to introduce your patient to palliative care. Although your patient may live several more years, palliative care can continue this conversation and support you and your patient along the way. You might say, this is a lot to take in. I'd like you to see our palliative care team. They can work with us to help you live for as long and as well as possible.